name is Kathy and today I'll be discussing how many plants and how much land you need to grow food on in a societal collapse situation. Let's start with sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes are grown from slips. To create your slips, carefully wash an already existing sweet potato and cut it in half. Place each section of sweet potato in a jar or a glass of water with half of the sweet potato sitting in the water and half the sweet potato above the water. Use toothpicks to hold the sweet potato in place. The sweet potato will start to grow vines or slips. Each sweet potato starter can produce up to 50 slips. A sweet potato slip is created by cutting the long vines that your starter sweet potato grows up into three to four inch pieces. You will notice that there will be nodules on the vines that start to grow tiny roots. Your new sweet potato plants will grow from these slips. Cut up your vines for, to plant the night before you plant them and keep them moist until they're in the ground. To plant sweet potato slips, you can either dig a small hole and plant the slip halfway into the ground, or you can place the slip directly on top of the ground and simply cover 80% of the slip with organic material. Hay is best, but other organic material works well. When planting the slips, make certain that they are watered well very soon after they've been put into the ground. Sweet potato slips can be planted six inches apart in rows. Place the sweet potato slips vertical in your rows. 150 row feet of sweet potato plants is a good number to shoot for per person in a survival situation. The sweet potato is a vine that is closely related to the morning glory and it will need room to spread out. So try to plant the sweet potatoes near the edge of the garden spot so that vines can grow out into non-garden areas. This is, if this is not possible, make the rows about 10 feet apart or more. Sweet potatoes are harvested in the fall just before the first frost. It is not necessary for the sweet potato plant to flower. Sweet potatoes are very sensitive to frosts, so you can't plant them until all chances of frost in your area are over. This is usually the end of May in most places. If you can get them in the ground sooner than this, it's better as, they, as you'll get a bigger crop. But they'll be killed by frost, so don't chance it. Sweet potatoes, as a, as a general rule, are pretty easy to grow once you've followed the above suggestions. The next crop to consider are the winter squashes and pumpkins. It's a good idea to plant a couple of summer squash plants, such as zucchinis and yellow summer squash, to use for cooking through the summer months. They are prolific producers but they do not store well at all. So they're simply for summer use only. All the squashes and pumpkins follow the same basic planting principles. First you soak your squash or pumpkin seed for a day or two before you plant it. The squash plants and pumpkin plants are planted in mounds not rows. Because they're vines try to find a place close to the edge of your garden space to grow them so the vines can grow out of your garden spot and not take um, unnecessary garden space. To create the squash and pumpkin mounds, mix aged manure and a lime product and organic material and rock dust. Basically enrich your soil the best you can. In with guard and mix it all with garden soil very good and then make a mound about three to four feet in diameter and about two to three feet high. Plant the seeds around the edges of the mounds. About six to eight seeds per mound. Make the mounds about eight to ten feet apart. You will need to plant two to three winter squash plants per person and two to three pumpkin plants per person. One zucchini plant and one yellow squash plant will feed four people through the summer. Make certain the mounds are well watered as soon as you finish planting them. Winter squash and pumpkin plants are planted when all chances of frost are over, usually in late May. But it's better if you can get them into the ground sooner if your area allows. You harvest winter squash and pumpkins when they are ready, ready or in late fall. They will withstand a couple of light frosts. Light. 
When you pick the winter squashes and pumpkins, they will need to be cured. How you do this is lay them out on a porch for a couple of weeks so that the skins will harden. When they And then you can store them. During the curing process, the squashes and pumpkins should not touch one another. Squash and pumpkin plants are pretty easy to grow if you follow the above guidelines. The next crop is regular potatoes. This crop very often grows without a lot of trouble, but in some areas it can be voraciously attacked by the potato beetle. Your best defense is good, nutritious soil. Potato plants are grown from existing potatoes. You take a regular potato and let it start to grow eyes. You can cut a single potato up into two to three chunks. Each chunk should have an eye or two on it. You then lay out the, the cut up seed potatoes and let them skin over. Basically, let the cut potatoes develop a new skin over the cut area. This will take about a week to achieve. Once you have your seed potato pieces, plant them in rows about 12 inches apart and 3 inches deep. Each row should be 18 inches apart. Potatoes can be planted early in the spring, around late March, in a, in a mild winter season or early April because they're a root crop. You will need 20 feet of potatoes per person. Potatoes are harvested in the fall after the plants have flowered and have died down. You can harvest a potato plant or two during the summer for new potatoes, but this will decrease your main harvest, so do this very sparingly. Potatoes are best stored without washing the dirt off them. They need to be stored in a dark location as light will create a poisonous green substance to develop. So keep them in the dark in a cool and moist, moist location, something like a root cellar. Use your imagination to figure out something that will work for you, cool and moist, if you don't have a root cellar proper. The next crops are the turnips, rutabagas, and beets. These are grown from seed. The seeds are very tiny, so they are not pre-soaked before planting. They are all planted in rows and can be planted in early to mid-April in most areas. Sow beet seeds to a depth of one half to one inch and space the rows 12 to 18 inches apart. Thin the seedlings to leave two to four inches of space between plants. The thinnings can be used as summer salads. All of these plants are frost hardy and can withstand several light frosts. Harvest them right out of the ground when you need them until the first really hard frost happens. Then get them out all out of the ground. To store them, cut the tops off and wash them then store them in a cool damp area like a root cellar. Use your imagination and try to create such an environment in your situation. The next crops are the peanuts, peas and beans. All of these crops are grown in rows. Peas can be planted very early in the spring. Mid to late March is not unheard of. These crops are grown in successive plantings, meaning that when you harvest one crop, plant another. Hopefully you can get two crops in a season. Peanuts need a longer growing season and are sensitive to frost. If you can grow them, this is wonderful. When planting peanuts, peas and beans, soak the seeds in water for one to two days before planting. Plant seeds one to two inches apart in rows at least 18 inches apart. After planting the row, use a hoe to cover the seeds with one and a half inches of soil. Then gently firm the soil with the back of a hole and water well. You'll need 20 to 30 feet of each of these per person. If your garden space is limited, and it probably will be, um, you will need trellis to trellis the plants. All this means is to create something that the plants can grow up, like poles with strings strung between, anything that will cause them to have something to grow up on. Peas and beans are usually pretty easy to grow, and they enrich the soil. You can eat beans and peas fresh, but for survival purposes it's best to dry them. To do this, shell them and spread them out so that they are not touching one another, and then let them dry indoors in a place like a warm attic until dry. Then store them in airtight containers so that no moisture can get at them. The next crop is sunflowers. 
These are very easy to grow, but they are a tall plant, so plant them in a location that will not shade other garden plants too much. Soak the sunflower seeds overnight before planting. To plant in rows, space seeds either 6 inches apart in a shallow trench between 1 and 2 inches deep. In sandy soil, 2 inches deep is better. Cover and keep watered until seeds sprout in 7 to 10 days. When the first true leaves appear, those are the second set of leaves. Thin plants to about 2 feet apart. Harvest sunflowers in the fall. Cut, cut the heads off the plants and store them in a dry location, such as a warm attic. The next crops are kale, collards, mustard greens, and things of this nature. You will need 10 feet per person. These crops are for summer, fall, and winter eating, fresh. All of these plants will withstand frosts and you can eat out of your garden until the hard frost comes. They do not store well, so they are exclusively for fresh eating. Sow these tiny seeds a half inch deep, spaced three inches apart, Thin the plants to 12 inches apart when they are 4 to 5 inches tall. Space the rows 18 to 24 inches apart. The next crop is the tomato plant. The easiest to grow of these is the cherry or grape tomato variety and they are prolific producers, but they need a long growing season. Tomato plants are started indoors in small containers in early February to be planted out in your regular garden patch when all chances of frost is over. This is usually in late May. Do not try to set your tomato plants out sooner than this. In some years you may be able to get away with it, an earlier planting date, but in a survival situation you just can't take that chance. So wait. To start tomato plants indoors, plant two to three tomato seeds one half inch deep into a small container of good soil and keep the soil moist and warm. Only keep the strongest tomato plant in each pot. Put these starter pots onto a window ledge to receive light. They are usually not difficult to grow in pots. The main issue is they tend to grow spindly. If this starts to happen, put them into a bigger pot and plant them deeper into the pot so that you're covering up that spindly, spindly stalk. Keep them well watered but not soaking. They need light and warmth, warmth, so bear this in mind. When the time is right for planting, plant the tomato plants in rows. Dig a hole and put in a handful of aged manure into the hole you just dug and then plant your tomato plant on top of the aged manure. Sprinkle a handful of aged manure around the base of the tomato plant after you've put the, the, the soil the back, you know, planted it into the ground. So that's a total of two handfuls of aged manure per plant. One in the hole, one on top. Tomato plants are a vine, so they need to be staked up on poles. When watering tomato plants, make sure you keep the leaves dry. Just water the soil. Tomato plants don't like to have their leaves wet. To pl tomato plants are frost sensitive, so they need to be harvested before the first frost sets in. They can be dried or canned if you have the equipment for long-term storage. Well, that's it for now. To stay up to date with my latest videos, make sure to subscribe to this free YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button right below this video. Take care.